What's going on, guys? Week 6 preview. 13 games to do, not 15, because two teams are on, four teams are on a bye. Uh, I'm going to the Rams-Giants game tomorrow, so that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I'll be there. Either way, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoy the preview. And remember, it's a big week of football. First bye weeks, of course. If teams on a bye, well, <laughs> no football for you, I guess. Either way, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoy the preview. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Fun NFL. We got the week 5 preview. I mean week 6 preview for the NFL. Um 13 games to do, so maybe not as many. Hope not gonna be as long as videos. Of course, go down to the subtitles to watch your team play. And of course, we're gonna get right into this. So uh, first game we're doing is Dolphins Jags. Dolphins are one and four. Jags are zero and five. This is on CBS in London at nine thirty. So yeah, a little bit of a funky game, but two stinky teams. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not gonna be watching this, but if you like either of these teams, wish you the best of luck, definitely for the Dolphins. But Dolphins might be starting Tua, which would be a big deal because they definitely need him back. Uh. Because, you got to admit, Tua is probably their best co It is probably going to make them a better team. Like, just kind of obvious. He's a winning quarterback, so it makes sense. So, Tua is questionable if he doesn't play Kobe for State, who it also is questionable if the worst case, Reed Senate plays and they just run the ball the rest of the whole game. Either way, Miles Gaskins, Alvin Ahmed, and Malcolm Brown in the backfield. Uh, Jalen Waddle, Albert Wilson, and Matt Collins are definitely going to play. Uh, Preston Williams and Devontae Parker, we don't know. Well, uh, we don't know about Preston Williams. Devonta Parker is out. Mike Isicki, Liam Eichenberg, Austin Jackson, Greg Mans, Robert Hunt, Jesse Davis, Matt Skira, cut, cut. Uh, Manuel Agba, Roquan Davis, Christian Wilkins, Adam uh, Butler, John Jenkins, Zach Seedler, Andrew Van Ginkel, Alandon Roberts, Jerome Baker, Brandon Scarlett, Elijah Campbell, Eric Rowe, Mason McCordy, Byron Jones, who is questionable, Justin Coleman, Noah Igbenogany. So, Xavier Howard is out, but they do still have their players. Javon Holland can, of course, step in. So, that's good. They have uh, Will Fuller, Lynn Bowden Jr., Michael Dieter, Laren Coleman, Ellen Hearns. Those are their guys they have on IL IR, so their two, their, best, their two best corners might be out. We know that Z Xavier Howard's going to be out, so that's good for the Jaguars. Not good for them, though, of course. So now, next game, uh, J now we got to go to the Jags, of course. Trevor Lawrence, James Robinson, Marvin Jones Jr., LaVisca Chanel Jr., Jamal At Agnew, Dan Arnold, Cam Robinson, Andrew Norwell, Tyler Shatley, Ben Barge, Juwan Taylor, Michael, uh, Malcolm Brown, Devon, uh, Devon uh, Hamilton, Roy Robertson Harris is questionable. Dwayne Smoove will probably go in. Josh Allen. Damian Wilson, D Dakota Allen, because Miles Jack is out. Caleb on chase on. Tyson Campbell is questionable. Nevin Lawson or and Andrew Zisco will have to step in. Andrew Wingard, Rashawn Jenkins, Shaquille uh, Griffin, and Chris Claybrook, Claybrooks. Trey Herndon is out. So they're a little banged up. They have DJ Chark Jr., Terry Godwin, Travis Etienne, Brandon Linder, AJ Khan. All those guys are on IR. So that's not good for them. Now we go to the keys to the game, of course. This is at CBS at 9.30 in London. Set the last London game of the season, if you didn't know. It's on CBS, so you can tune into that. Okay. Uh, so for the Dolphins, offense, run the ball efficiently, then play action off of that with the QB. So basically, they're going to have to go back to basics because Miles Gaskin, as much as he's not an efficient runner, he can pick up a lot of first downs. He is explosive at times. So they got to use that. Run the ball, then play action with Tua if he plays. They're going to have to take some shots. Jalen Water is a gifted receiver. He will make the catches. So as a result, they're going to have to take shots. This, te this team's going to have to learn. They're that's going to have to be a big part of their offense. Then for the defense, get back to the way they played before last week. Yeah, they gave, they do give up a lot of yardage, 
but they don't break and they force a ton of turnovers. Do not, that last week, forget it. It was the worst defensive performance of the week by far. So as a result, they got to go back to basics and just play good defense. For the Jags offense, uh, no turnovers and run the ball out. The run defense for the Dolphins doesn't really scare me that much. They can't turn over the ball, though, because that's all they're, they're not going to have a chance if they do that. And they're going to have to run the ball out. They have a really good running back. Use them, please. And use run with Trevor, too. Jack's defense stopped their own pressure of the quarterback with a four-man rush. So this defense is, of course, if you haven't known, is not the best secondary. So they're going to have to get to the quarterback with four guys, which I don't know why they can't. They have some really gifted players. That should happen. So, yeah, that's going to be the end of this one uh, for the – Dolphins, Jags, keys to the game. The Dolphins have some really good players. The Jags have some really good players. I hope that's a good game. But I'll have to watch film on that on Monday. Either way, Vikings are 2-3. and three, Panthers are 3-2. and two. This is the next game. This one's at Fox. Only in, available in some areas. So, as a result, good chance you will want to look, check your local listings and probably have NFL ticket if you want to watch this game. But either way, the Vikings are 2-3. and three. They came off of a... Uh, um, very um uh close win to the uh Lions, which is not good because the Lions haven't won a game. Panthers, uh they lost to the Eagles. Uh if you haven't known that's not a good thing. So yeah. For the Panthers, simply wanna say, um, they're gonna have to win this game. The Vikings are not a very good team. Are they a bad team? Definitely not. Are they a good team? We don't know yet. Panthers they have shown they could be a really good team. They're definitely on the defensive side of the ball. They just got to get more consistent. Sam Darnold can't have a terrible game. Pretty much that. But the Panthers, um, the Vikings have Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne, Tyler Conklin, Rashad Hill, Ur- uh, Urza Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury, Omid Oda, O Oda, uh, Brian O'Neill, Daniel Hunter, Ammon Watts, Sheldon Richardson, Dalvin Thomason, Ver- uh, Everson Griffin, Nick Vigil, uh, Eric Hendricks, Anthony Barr, Pat, Pat P, Harrison Smith, Xavier Woods, Rashad Breland, Mackenzie Alexander, and Hammer Dancer are all going into Carolina. But I'll tell you who's definitely not going into Carolina. Chad Beebe, uh, B.C. Johnson, Nate Stanley, Keen Anju, Jordan Scott, J- uh, Jamarius Johnson. Yeah, all those guys are on the IR if you haven't known. And then for the Panthers. Uh, Panthers, Sam Darnold can't play a bad, pretty simple, but they have him starting, Sam Darnold, of course. Chuba Hubbard's going to play because, haven't fun- known, Christian McCaffrey is on the IR now. That is not good. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall Jr., Ian, Ian Thomas, Cameron Irving, Dennis Daly, Matt Paradis, John Miller, Taylor Moten, Brian Burns, Derek uh, Brown, Daquan Jones, Morgan Fox, Chaturgaros Matos will have to step up to, along with Davion Nixon and uh, Bravion Roy. Hassan Reddick, Jermaine uh, uh, Carter Jr., Shaq Thompson is out. Another week, Julian Stanford's going to step up. Dante Jackson, Jeremy Chin, Sean Chandler, TJ Anderson is questionable. Keith Taylor Jr., AJ Boy, uh, Boye. Simon Gilmore's going to be out another week. Uh, Miles Main, uh, Hartsville. J.C. Horn, Justin Burris. Pat Elfline, Mike Panizuic, Dante, uh, Deontay Brown, and Christian McCaffrey. So yeah, they're not gonna have their best player. Or yeah, the be- they're not gonna have their best player for another week. Yes, um, well, they're not gonna have their best player who is somewhat we think could be available. Because if you didn't know, yeah, there's a really high percentage chance that. That, uh, CMC won't be playing for a while. Because he is on the IR. Stephon Gilmore isn't, so he might actually play. But either way, keys to the game. For the Chargers offense, control the clock and take shots. I mean, not, what am I saying? For the Vikings offense, run the ball and then throw to all levels with J.J. To other field to JJ and Thielen. They're gonna have to work their way around. This defense is very good. They're gonna get the pass rush because I don't know what the heck they did two weeks ago, but they definitely got away from that and they did what they did. They're good defense. It's gonna be tough to play against them, but they're gonna be they have to run the ball really well. Kinda simple. Vikings defense, don't let Sam run in the red zone and play a soft zone on long yardage downs. Sam Donald's gonna force passes on long yardage downs. It's what he does. He's done it his whole career. I'm not saying it's a terrible thing because 
shows he's aggressive. Mahomes doesn't do that. He just drops back 20 yards and yeets it deep. So, yeah. the pan uh, At least he for it, like forcing throws is a terrible thing to do. So, yeah, the Vikings defense are going to have to uh, step on that and make, that, make him pay for it. Yeah. Even if Sam does that, I don't hate it because so, there's much worse things you can do. But they're going to have to take advantage of that. And definitely don't want Sam running the red zone. He will score touchdowns. Big guy. Then for the Panthers offense, run the ball efficiently, take shots, and easy reads with for Sam. Sam Darnold cannot be making these complicated reads like last week. First of all, it's really hard for him. He needs to be able to get ready. He can actually make these really hard reads before. He's done it plenty of times. He has the mind for it. It's just he's really, he really struggles if, it, if it's right out of the gate. He's the type of quarterback that needs time to get ready. Of course, take shots. They haven't really taken many shots this year, and as a result, it hasn't been that great. But their offense, they have the speed and the jump ball ability. Terrace Marshall, they got to have to take shots. And then run the ball very well because this Vikings defense will not uh, operate without a good run defense. So if they're able to do that, it's going to be tough for them. And then for the Panthers defense, uh, play the bread and butter and the four defensive linemen on the on a gap covers to the go uh, go back to weeks one, two, and three. So last week wasn't bad. They actually were pretty good against the run. Not great, but they were pretty good. Weeks one, two, and three, they were phenomenal against the run. It was it, it and it really transferred to the pass games. But they covered gaps so well. Is their bread and butter? They have the personnel for it. So if they go back to that, they're gonna have a really easy time getting long long yardage situations and pressuring Cousins. So yeah, it's gonna be into this one uh, for Vikings Panthers. Uh, wish the luck to the Vikings. Uh, yeah, Panthers, you got a tough game. Uh, they're gonna have to step up. Cause next game we're doing is a big one. Chargers Ravens. Both teams four and one. Obviously the game of the week. Problem is it's not getting flexed to see uh um to Sunday night. It's on CBS at one o'clock. I don't know when uh, anyone everyone should be watching this game. It's a huge game. Ravens win this, they're taking off to the ceiling. Chargers, same thing. If they win this, they're off the ceiling. But the char the Chargers, everyone's saying they haven't that like everyone knows the Chargers are a really good team, but we haven't seen them beat like bam, like they dominated that team. They do it this week, the I'll I'll, I'll put them up there with all the other top dogs. Ravens, uh it's kind of the same thing, except the Ravens uh have a can run the ball, so that's another thing. And the Ravens have always been a good team, so yeah. But then they go to, um, so for the Chargers, they have Justin Herbert, of course, starting. Uh, Austin Eckler, Mike Williams is questionable, he'll probably play, though. Uh, Keenan Allen, Jalen Guyton, and Jared Cook, Rashawn Slater, Matt Filer, Corey Lindsley, Michael Schofield, Storm Norton, Jerry, Jerry Tillery, Linval Joseph, Chris Covington, Joey Bosa, Nick Neiman starting because Drew Tranquil is out. Kaiser White, uh, Luciano Nawosu, Chris Rumpf. Chris Harris Jr., Derwin James Jr., Mark Webb Jr. is going to start because, uh, or, yeah, he's going to have to start. That's going to be pretty disastrous. Uh, Zero out of these out, so, yeah. Michael Davis, Asante Samuel Jr., uh, Tavon H Campbell, they have, uh, Ode, uh, Obishi, the, ta uh, guard, Brian, uh, Bulaga, of course, Kenneth Murray, Justin Jones, and Dam uh, Dam uh, Damian Lloyd on the IR. For the Ravens, um, they of course have Lamar starting, uh, Tavis Murray, uh, Devontae Freeman, Tayson Williams, Tyson Williams, Devon, uh, Le'Veon Bell, they all they use all of them. Marquise, uh, Marquise Brown, Devin Duvernay, Rashad Bateman's making his debut, Mark Andrews, uh, Patrick, uh, Alejandro Villanueva is going to have to start at, uh, left tackle, because Ryan Stanley got another week. Ben Powers, Bradley Bozeman, Kevin Zeitler, and Patrick McCarry. Justin uh, Matabuchi, Brandon Williams, Calais Campbell, Ty 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 Tyus Bowser, Malik Harrison, Patrick Queen, Justin Houston, Anthony Averett, oh yeah, Adafi Oway, Bernal McPhee, Chuck Clark, Brandon Stevens, Matt Circus, Deshaun Elliott is questionable, Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, and Tavon Young. So, if you haven't known yet, um, yeah, the... The Ravens came back and they on a game they definitely shouldn't have won. They won though, so yeah. But for the Chargers offense, I said control the clock and take shots. It's basically what they did last week, except against a better defense or more consistent defense, to be more exact. Yeah, this defense will give up big plays every once in a while, 
Just for the fact they don't have this, they don't have their number two corner. They don't, they don't have their number one and two corners. That's gonna really hurt. So they're gonna have to take shots. This, this is a really good offense. They, they're gonna have to be smart with the shots, though. They're gonna have to control the clock too, because the Chargers defense has to contain Lamar. Uh, yeah, I don't care, care if you give up 250 rushing yards. If you, if you don't can't stop Lamar, you're not gonna win the game. Like it's really simple. Lamar will run all over you. It's just simple. They have a really bad run defense. If they contain Lamar, they'll give their offense the, the shot because. This Ravens offense is going to run the ball, which is, I think, what they're going to have to do to win the game because this defense can't stop the run, so they're going to run the ball. <laughs> Just do that. Like, get, give them what, they take, uh, what they're bad at. For the Ravens defense, force turnovers is a no long pass plays. Please, for the love of God, force turnovers. Justin Herbert makes some really dumb decisions once in a while. I'm not kidding. There's a reason he's such he, he he's such he's he's such a good quarterback because he's really aggressive. Unlike Mahomes though, and a couple other really aggressive quarterbacks, he gets away with some of the stuff. They can't let that happen every time, and they're gonna have no long pass plays. Cause if they don't let them have any long pass plays, they're gonna have no explosiveness, and it's gonna really hurt them. So yeah, that's the Ravens have the upper hand in this thing, but the Chargers should have a really high chance of winning this too. Next game is going to be a stinker. I'm going to it. So, yeah. Uh, Daniel Jones is going to be, should start. But, bad news is he's, yeah, he's home. Good for him. They're 1 4, though. After a blowout loss. It's not really a blowout. Wasn't a great game against the Cowboys. But they're playing the 4 1 Rams, who are red hot right now. And they're not in, they're not very happy right now. After that week 4, uh, four loss, last week they beat, they took care of business against the Seahawks. This week they're looking for a bloodbath. So, yeah, they have Matt Stafford starting, Daryl Henderson, uh, Sonny Michelle, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Van Jefferson, Tyler Higby, Andrew Wayward, David Edwards, Brian uh, Allen, Austin Corbett, Rob Havenstein, Ashawn Robinson, Sebastian Joseph Day, Aaron Donald, Terrell Lewis, Kenny Young, Troy Reader, Leonard Floyd, Robert Rochelle, Jordan Fuller, T Taylor Rapp, Jalen Ramsey, David Long, and Dante uh, Dion. Yeah, some big news came out that. Jamil, uh, Demi, of course, is on the IR, uh, Justin Hollins, but the Rams' best, second best corner, uh, Darius Williams is on the IR, so that's big news. He's a really good corner. So, Dante Dion, who I have to admit is really talented, really fast, does not get beat over the top. Dante Dion will not get beat over the top, You and he's really good at tackling. He He's just a fast corner who does not take the bait, and especially has really good tackle, tackling skills. He's basically Jalen Ramsey, but not as good. So, yeah, that's who the Rams are having, but their Darius Williams is on the IR, so that can be a problem. But the, uh, the, uh, Dante Dion, I think it's definitely going to be a really good player. Then for the Giants, uh, Danny Dimes is supposed to start. Devontae Booker is going to have to play a running back, though. Sterling Shepard, uh, Darius uh, Slayton, and Kadarius Tony are questionable, so they might have John Ross and Colin Johnson starting. So, if John Ross is out there, the Rams are putting too high. It's kind of simple. Evan uh, Ingram, Kyle Rudolph, and then uh, Andrew Thomas and Ben Bredson are questionable. So, Nate Solder and Matt Skir uh, Skiro might have to start. Picked up from the uh, Dolphins. I mean, yeah. Billy Price, Will Hernandez, uh, Matt Perr might have to start because Nate Solder might have to move the left tackle. Dexter Lawrence, Austin Johnson, Leonard Williams, Lorenzo Carter, Tate Crowder, Reggie Ragland. O'Shane Simenez, James Bradbury, Jabril Peppers, Logan Ryan, Adoree Jackson, Aziz Ojolari, Quincy Roche, Josh Jackson, and Darnay Holmes. They have, uh, and Aaron Robertson is out another week. But they have Darius Williams, Qu uh, Quincy Wilson, Ellerson Smith, Justin Hiller, TJ Brunson, Nick Gates, uh, Levine Toy Lolo, all in the IR. So that, yeah, that if you, if I have to state the obvious, that is not great for the Giants, because, let's put it this way, they're going to need a lot to win this football game, even if the Rams' number one, number two corner is out for a long time. Not just this game, but the Rams are going to have to step up in the secondary, but for right now, I said, basically, Rams offense run the ball for over 150 plus yards. This offense can run the ball. They don't want to run the ball, but they know they can, so they're going to have to do it a lot today. Like, Tomorrow, if they run the ball the whole game, it won't be a bad thing, but they're going to go to the play-action motion scheme because that's the bread and butter of the Rams with the running game. And if teams stop the running game, they can just go to the pass game. But either way, for the Rams defense, give up under 275 yards in, 10 le in less than 10 points. Yeah, that's not going to be an easy thing to do. They did it against the Giants last year, 
and yeah, it was a better defense, but this Rams defense is going to have to show up one of these weeks. It was this week, next week. It's it's a very talented defense that just needs to show up and be like, yeah, we're in the house. We're not giving up anything. And I think they can do it, but it's going to be tough with out really their or a really key part of their team. But if they can do it, I'll I'll be happy. Ten less than ten points is really hard to do, but it's not out of the question. Because they're facing the Giants' offense, I said run the ball efficiently, score in the red zone. If they get in the red zone, they're gonna have to score because those chances are gonna be few and far between if something dumb doesn't happen. So yeah, they're gonna have to take advantage of any any opportunity really. Giants teams give up less than uh, twenty points, two sacks, two plus turnovers. Two plus turnovers, I really don't see is going to be really easy at all. Sacks, maybe even harder. Less than 20 points. They're going to have a fantastic game. Basically keep the team in the, uh, their offense in the game. If they can somehow do that, hats off to them. But it's going to be a really tough game for the Giants. And this is 1 o'clock on Fox. Check your local listings, of course. Next is Texans Colts. This is on CBS at 1 o'clock. Both teams are 1-4. and four. Um... The Colts are probably the best one in four team in, in, in like, a long time. They're a really good team. Uh, they just can't find a way to win. Texans are a bad, really bad team. Yeah, they're competitive, but they're just a terrible team. Davis Mills is starting again, though. Mark Ingram, David Johnson, uh, Philip Lindsay, Brandon, Bur- uh, Brandon Cooks, Chris Conley, N- Nico Collins, Faroff Brown, Jordan Akins, G- uh, John Christian Jr., Titus Howard, Justin McRae, because Justin Britt is out. Max Sharping, Charlie Hack, or Titus Howard depends. No, not Titus Howard. Winnie Merciless, Malik Collins, Demarcus Walker, because Rock Russ Blacklock is out another week. Jordan and Jenkins, Zach Cunningham, Christian Kirksey, Garrett Wall uh, Wallow, Vernon Hargraves the third. Eric Murray, Justin Reed, Sarah's Mitchell, M- Terrence M- Terrence Mich- Mitchell, Travion Thomas, and Trayman Smith because De- uh, Desmond King is questionable. Tyrod Taylor, of course, Tyrod Taylor is on uh, IR. Laramie Tunsil, Marcus Cannon, Vincent Taylor, Tay Davis, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, all on the IR. Then we go to the Colts, the most unlucky team in the NFL. They have to win this game by, like, 20 points. Like, they got a tough game next week, and they're going to have to win this one. Carson Wentz starting. He's had a fantastic year so far. Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines, Ronald McNaughton, who's going to be traded. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr., uh, T.Y. Hill, and Zach Pascal, Jack Doyle. Eric F- Fisher, Chris Reed, Ryan Kelly, Mark Lewinsky, Julian Davenport's going to start again because Brian Smith is out. Quiddy Pay, uh, DeForest Buckner, uh, Grover Stewart, Alquan Mohammed, Darius Leonard, Bobby Okariki, Z- uh, Zayar Franklin, Rock Yassin, Keir Willis, Julian Blackman, Xavier Rhodes is questionable, Kenny Moore, Isaiah Rogers, and uh, Bipo, uh, Bo Pete Keys because he might have played because Xavier Rhodes is questionable. TJ Carey, Nick Nelson, Skate Moore, Jordan Glass now, Rob Windsor, Quentin Nelson, Sam Tevy, JJ Nelson, Quandre Davis, and Sam Ellinger all on the IR. So obviously that is not good at all in any sense of the imagination. But for the te- uh, Texans offense, run the ball efficiently and no turnovers, 20 plus points. So yeah. 20 plus points is not impossible. This the Colts defense is average at it's an average defense. Run the ball efficiently. I don't see that as that big of an issue. No turnovers probably. But they put up 20 uh, plus points against a defense last week that is much better than the Colts. So yeah, if I was the Texans, I just try to win. The, I just try to uh, play good football and put up some points. And then for the uh, Texans defense, four short drives and turnovers. Turnovers isn't impossible. It's Carson Wentz, as you know. Carson Wentz will throw a, a pick or a fumble every once in a while. Four short drives, I don't think that's impossible. They just got to pressure Wentz and uh, play the short game, and that'll really help. But then, because this defense, no offense, they're going to have a little bit of a tough time. But then for the Colts offense, one of the best game by five minutes, five plus minutes. That's going to be big because they really haven't been able to do it, and it's probably why they're losing. Then a short run pass game. So if they play short run and pass, just dink their dunk, dink and dunk down the field. It's gonna be really, it's gonna be really frustrating for the Texans defense, and they're just gonna give a lot, a lot of points. For the Colts defense, lots of negative yardage plays, sacks, TFLs, and blow up short passes. This defense has intensity, and they've showed it at times this season. Where anything that if you attempt anything, 
that takes a little longer to develop, it's going to be an absolute stink fest. It's just going to be knocked down, knocked down everything. So the Colts play with intensity and just don't let anything short happen. It's going to be really, really hard for the Texans to get anything going. Speaking of Dink and Dunk, the Chiefs are 2-3. and three. If you didn't know, that's uh, pretty shocking because they've started off 4-0 and oh for the past four years. And then this season, like, yeah, we're going to be 2-3. They have too many gimmicks. They never, and I mean never, try to move the ball down the field other than taking big plays. They're not doing the other side of football. And their defense is the worst in the NFL by far. Washington's, uh, on the other hand, they've got a good offense. Their offense is probably playing better than Kansas City right now. Uh, it's not explosive, but it's better because they have actually have a running game. And their defense is better. That Honestly, Washington's playing better football than the Chiefs. Their, de their def both defenses stink. This could be a high-scoring game, but Washington's defense has to show up. For the Chiefs, they got Mahomes starting. He needs to get back on track. Daryl Williams in the backfield. With Clyde Edwards Alaire on the IR. Tyreek Hill's questionable. I highly doubt he won't play. Michael Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, Travis Kelsey, Orlando Brown, Nick O'Grady will probably have, will might have to start because Joe Tunia is questionable. Creed Humphrey, Trace Mann, Lucas Nye. I've, if I were you, I'd put uh, uh, Lauren Duvernay Tardif in there for Trace Smith. Trace Smith has been struggling. Not as bad as Lucas Niang, but they're really not. those two guys aren't really that much to play. Alex Ogilvy is going to have to go in because Chris Jones is out. Jerron Reed, Derek Nadi, Frank Clark, Nick Bolton, Ben Yeeman might have to start because Anthony Hitchens is questionable, but Willie Gay is back. Thank gosh. He is their, might be their savior for this terrible defense. Mike Hughes, Chris Lamons are going to have to play because uh, – Javarius Ward is out, or DeAndre Baker. Tyron Matthew, Daniel Sorensen, LeJerry Sneed, and Rashad Fenton. Then, def uh, then for Washington, who has had a pretty rough season so far, they're going to have to uh, stay, uh, they're gonna have to, they could have an opportunity to be second place. Taylor Heineke starting, of course, he's played really well. Uh, Antonio Gibson is questionable, so J.D. McKissick might have to play. Terry McLaurin is questionable. But he probably will play because Curtis Samuels is out and Adam Humphreys and Diami Brown or Antonio Gandy Golan will have to play. Ricky Seals, Jones, Charles Leno Jr., Eric Flowers, uh, Chase Rillier, Wes Schweitzer, and uh, especially Charles because Brandon Scherf and Sam Cosme are out. Chase Young, Deron Payne, Jonathan uh, Allen, Matt Ioannidis, Montez Sweat, Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, Kadeel Hudson. Kendall Fuller, Landon Collins, uh, Cameron Curl, William Jackson III, uh, Benjamin St. Just, and Troy Apke. Fitz, uh, Fitzmagic is on the IR, Jalen Jelks, Daryl uh, Robert, uh, Roberts, Jer uh, John Norris, Derek Forrest, John Bostic, and uh, Tory McTyre are all on the IR also. So yeah, we're going to go to the keys of the game now. Let's get right into them. So for the Chiefs, gotta say, run the ball efficiently and dink and duck on long drives with the field with no turnovers. This offense needs to reinvent itself because their defense is that bad. I am not kidding. When your defense is that bad, well, you you have to reinvent your offense, which on the bright side is really not a bad thing because this offense is really relying on things they should not have to rely on with that much talent. It's running the ball. This offensive line needs to be physical and dink and dunk, short passes, good catch and run, really physical, long drives, and get down the field with no turnovers, no mistakes, good football. They're, this offense can play really good football if they need to. Chiefs defense, just don't give up a million points. Yeah, this defense is that bad where I'm just saying that. I'm going to just say this for the next couple of weeks until they actually figure it out. If they even do. Washington's offense win the possession game by 5 minutes and 30 plus points to give them room for a lead. So if they get a lead, it's kind of it kind of stinks because the Chiefs don't want to have to play from behind, if you haven't known. They can, but they don't want to. 5 plus minutes, I really don't see how that's any. 30 plus points, you should get that easy. Pretty simple. Washington's defense, take advantage of mistakes. Chiefs offense is sloppy, so take advantage of it. Your defense is not that great, but they can take advantage of mistakes with those superstars on that D-line. They do that good. The Chiefs are going to be in them for a long day, and the Washington should win. But really don't know about this thing because the Chiefs, 
If their offense reinvents themselves, it could be a really tough game for Washington. But I really hope Washington wins this game because the way the Chiefs are playing, they don't deserve to win any games. Packers, Bears, probably it's on Fox. It's a localized game, but I got to admit, it's the best game on Fox this week by far. Packers are 4-1. and one. They won on a, um interesting uh, way to end the game uh, last time. Bears are 3-2, and two, though. Uh, they're looking pretty good. They are going to get crushed. They're either going to get exposed or they're going to show. We're not a bad team. It's 1 o'clock on Fox. For the Packers, I said, well, first, they got Rodgers, Adams. They got the two Aarons, uh, Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Robert Tunyon. Uh, Josh Nijman might have started again because uh, Elton, Jenkins, Elton Jenkins is questionable. D David Bacchiari still is out. He needs to come back. John Runyon, Josh Myers, Royce Newman, Billy Turner, Dean Lowry, Kenny Clark, Kingsley Kiki, Preston Smith, Devondre Campbell, Jalen Smith, Rashad Gary, Eric Stokes, Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage, Shandon Sullivan, uh, Shamar G uh, Jean Charles, and Isaac Yadam. Um, they have Will Redmond, uh, uh, Kevin King is out. Will Redmond, uh, Zadarius Smith, Jair Alexander, and Mar MVS all on the IR, and Ch uh, Chauncey Rivers. So, yeah. The secondary is really banged up for the Packers, if you haven't known. Will the Bears be able to take advantage of it? No, because their offense stinks. But they do have Justin Fields starting. Uh, yeah, Khalil Herbert's gonna get the start. Uh, he, he, he's, it's his time. But Allen Robinson needs to play because he is questionable. Darnell Mooney, uh, Marquise Goodwin, Demir Bird, Cole Komet, Jimmy Graham, J uh, Jesse James are going to have to use them a lot. Jason Peters, Cody White Whitehair, Sam Mustafer, James Daniels, Elijah Wil Wilkinson. A key mix is questionable. Can't imagine you won't play. Angela Blackson behind him. Eddie Goldman, Bill Nichols, Cleo Mack is questionable. Travis Gibson behind him. Again, can't imagine, imagine you won't play. Roquan Smith, Danny Trevathan. Robert Quinn, J Jalen Johnson, Tayshawn Gibson Sr., Eddie Jackson is questionable, Kendall Vildor, uh, Artie Burns and Duke Shelley are both questionable. Uh, this is a mess of a uh, secondary. I don't really want to have to shake that out. So, yeah. Uh, don't want to shake that out like just about everyone else because it's really hard to shake out a secondary when there's 40 guys questionable. So, yeah, for this game, I said for the Packers, run the ball efficiently, throw to uh, Tony and Zanon, and finally, uh, and finally, only 30 pass attempts. This is honestly going to not be that easy. Though, running the ball efficiently might be the easiest part. Under 30 pass attempts is going to be difficult. It will be difficult, because if they can't run the ball and, Ro and Rodgers gets sacked a couple times, they're going to have to throw some long, uh, they're going to have some long downs where they're going to obviously have to pass the ball. But if Tanyans and Adams can both get their catches and yards, I think they'll be good, especially in the red zone for both of them, because Tanya Tanya needs the ball. He is their biggest red zone threat other than Devontae Adams, so get him the ball. And yeah, so yeah, that's all I have to say for Packers offense. Packers defense, pressure, fields, and stop the run. The easiest thing is stopping the run. Even with Khalil Herbert, who I think is a good running back, he is no superstar. Stop the running sh run shouldn't be that hard. Pressure fields, because if you don't, he might find Darnell Mooney for a touchdown. Bears offense, run the ball efficiently 20 plus points. Do what you did last week, basically, because it worked. Even if you're not, it's going to be impossible to hold uh, the Packers offense to nine points. They got to score 20 plus. That's just, that's straight up, that's just straight up facts. Bears defense, stop the run, uh, 20 or 100 points in turnovers. Turnovers, that's not going to be easy. Stop the run, that's not going to be, well, they can stop the run, they have the personnel for it. 20 or 100 points, that's going to be almost impossible. The way this Packers offense is playing, it, it's going to be really hard. So, if you're the ba uh, Bears defense, play good football. Basically, that's it. Packers should win this one. I wouldn't surprise me if the Bears won, though, because Bears are not a bad defense. Obviously. Next game, uh, Bengals-Lions. If you didn't know, the 49ers, Saints, Jets, and Falcons are all on a bye week. So, yeah, those teams are all on a bye week, which is good because I don't want to watch the Jets. I don't want to watch the Falcons. Saints are fun to watch because they they, get, they they win one week and they play awesome one week, they stink the next week. The 49ers are a mess of injuries. Either way, next game is Bengals-Lions uh, on Fox at 1 o'clock. The Bengals are 3-2, and two, the Lions are 0-5. The Lions, um, uh, 
you got a good coach, you got a good quarterback, you got a good tight end, you're not going to win any games. Bengals, they're a good team this year. Because their offense is, is just clicking. Joe Burrow starting Joe Mixon. He's going to play. He's been questionable for the past four weeks. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, C.J. Uzama, jo Jonah Williams, Gwen and Spain, Trey Hopkins. Jackson Carmen has to play because Trey Hill is, I can guarantee you, is not a right guard. Right, Riley Reef. Sam Hubbard, DJ Reader, Larry Ogunjobi, Trey Hendrickson, Logan Wilson, Akeem G Davis Gaither. Jermaine Pratt, Eli Apple, Von Bell, Jesse Bates, Chidobe, Awuzie, Jalen uh, Davis, and Mike Hilton. And surprisingly, yeah, Eli Apple hasn't really played that bad. Uh, uh, D.T. Smith, D uh, Zafolo, Kadir Kareem, Jordan Evans, Joseph Osai, and Trey Waynes are all on the IR. Not, really not that bad of an injury list compared to last year. Now we go to the team that hasn't won a game. Uh, Jared Goff, uh, they might have to add Godwin again after the start, but DeAndre Swift is going to have to play, or Jamal Williams, one of the two. Amon Arazan, Brown, Khalif Raymond, Kadir Hodge. Uh, Darren Fells is in the worst tight end, so TJ Hawkins, Hawkinson does, gets hurt, won't be the end of the world. Penny Sewell, uh, Jonah Jackson, Evan Brown, Hollow Vitae, Matt Nelson. Michael Brockers, uh, Lee McNeil. Nick Williams, Charles Harris is probably at start because Trey Flowers is questionable. Alex Anzalone, Derek Barnes, Austin Bryant, uh, uh, Monty Oriaraway, Oriaraway, uh, Will Harris, Trey, uh, Tracy Walker, Jerry Jacobs, Nicole Roby Coleman, Bobby Price. So those are your two teams, obviously. And now we go to the keys to the game, of course. So, yeah. <laughs> so, for the keys to the game, uh, Bengals offense 20 plus points, and Joe Burrow has to stop making bad mistakes. So, yeah, Joe Burrow is making really dumb mistakes at times. He's a good quarterback, and they can't make mistakes because. This team just it's it, it it's it, it, he can't make mistakes basically. I know how crazy that sounds, but he's a good quarterback that just doesn't need to make these mistakes that he's making. Pretty simple. Taylor, De uh, where is he? Taylor Decker is on injured reserve. Yeah, pretty de uh, pretty simple. For the Bengals, even first drive stop the run. It is not hard. The let them score some points, but don't just pressure Goff. For the Lions' offense. Score points and then throw to Hawkinson. Scoring points should not be a problem. Throwing to Hawkinson, if he doesn't play, well, whatever. But the Lions office just needs to play that good football with Hawkinson. He's their best player, so get him the ball. Lions defense, stop the run of pressure Burrow. Stopping the run will be an issue. Pressuring Burrow should not be an issue. They actually have some good pass rushers. So get after the quarterback, especially with Romeo Okora, who's a really good pass rusher. Next game, uh, from a little bit of a stinker to an absolute uh, mammoth showdown between the Cleveland Browns, who uh, lost because their defense was inconsistent. They're hosting the Cardinals, who are 5-0. If you didn't know, they're undefeated. Everyone's saying the Cardinals are really good. I cannot disagree with that. But they got Kyler Murray started. Okay, this is 405 on Fox. But Kyler Murray is starting. Chase Edmonds is questionable. James Conner might have started. DeAndre uh, Hopkins. AJ Green, Christian uh, Kirk, Zach Ertz is now their tight end. G G Humphrey, DJ Humphreys, Justin Pugh, Max Garcia, Josh Jones, Kelvin Beach and Will probably start. JJ Watt, Rashad Lawrence, Jordan Phillips, Chandler Jones is out, so Dennis Garnick will have to go in. Jordan Nix will probably have to play or Zayvon Collins. Isaiah Simmons, Marcus Golden. Uh, Byron Murphy will play. Jalen uh, Thompson, Buda Baker. Robert Alford, Antonio Hamilton, and Marco Wilson, who is questionable. Or Chris Banjo, it depends. Uh, they have uh, Rodney Hudson, Justin Murray, Zach, uh, Jack Car Crawford, Charles Washington, and Ezekiel Turner are all on the IFR. And if you haven't found out yet, yeah, Cliff Kingsbury is out for this game and Zach Allen because they both have <coughs> COVID. Now we got the Browns. Um, they got Baker starting. Nick Chubb is out. Kareem Hunt is questionable. That could be a catastrophe, but he will start. So yeah, Odell, uh, who has not really done anything so far this season. Oh yeah, the Browns have had, do have a lot of injuries too. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Rashad Higgins, uh, Austin Hooper, 
Chandler Girls Jr., Brett Blake has met at the start, but probably not. Joel Batonio, uh, I don't know what else uh, J.C. Trader will, will have to start. Wyatt Teller uh, is in there. Jack Conklin, questionable. James Hudson might have to go out there. Miles Garrett is questionable, will probably play, though. Uh, Malik Jackson and uh, Malik McDowell will probably play. Jaday Van Cloney is questionable again. Joe Jackson behind him. Matt Wilson, J.O.K., Anthony Walker, Sione Taki Taki. Uh, Denzel Ward is questionable, same with Ray Newsome. Troy Hill, Greedy Williams, Herb Miller. Uh, Ronnie Harrison and John J uh, John Johnson. To prove it, they um, have Jarvis Landry, Ryan Switzer, Andrew Janovich, who is their fullback. Nick Harris, Chu uh, Chris Hubbard, Drew Forbes, Connor Davis, Jacob Phillips, MJ Stewart Jr., all on the IR. That's a lot of names if you haven't figured out by now. So, yeah, ne uh, so yeah for the keys to the game, it's, uh, I want to keep it short and sweet, but I probably won't be able to. To keep it simple. So, for the Cardinals offense, run the ball efficiently, control the clock, and 30 plus points, take shots of the up. Yeah, just go back to what it was like in week against the Rams. That was absolutely phenomenal, and it's against the worst defense. Should not be that impossible, if you ask me. And the running the ball efficiently might be a little harder, but I think they'll be able to do it pretty well. Cardinals defense slow down the run and pressure Baker. Slowing down the run might not be as hard, but the offensive line is still going to push, and Baker is going to make good throws, because he did last week, and it really showed. But if they pressure Baker, which won't be impossible, it could be a, the Cardinals could get play a good game of defense. Browns even take shots, throw it all over the yard, and run the ball. It's one, yeah, you might have thought well, that last week won one of those games, but their defense shows up. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, this offense needs to get needs to just have some swagger. Last week they were playing from behind. Baker could not throw the ball over the yard. This week they're gonna have to do it because it's time. Um, they're due for one of those huge games. Yeah, you could say last week was, but they just didn't really. It was they. It, it just didn't feel right. Browns even stopped the run and contain Murray. Containing Murray won't be impossible. They have some really good good athletic linebackers. Stopping and running, I don't really know yet. But otherwise, it should be an easy game for them to just play good defense, if you ask me. So, yeah, I'm joking. It's going to be a tough game for them. But they just need to stop the run, and then everything else will fall into place. If they can get it to the fourth quarter like the Niners did last week with a much better quarterback, it would not surprise me if the Browns win this game. But the Cardinals are a really good football team that have a ton of weapons. It'll be a tough game. Now we're going to the Raiders, Broncos. Both teams are three and two. Uh, pretty simple. They need to win this game. Both teams got exposed last week. Uh, well, Broncos even more. But the Broncos need this game. Uh, Ra Raiders just need it for the fact that they they need any type of momentum they can get in any sort of way. Raiders got Derek Carr, Josh Jacobs, Henry Ruggs, Hunter Renfro, Brian Edwards, Darren Waller, Colton Miller, John Simpson, Andre James, Alex Leatherwood, Brandon Parker, Max uh, Crosby, Solomon Thomas might have to play. Well, he will probably have to play because Quinn Jefferson is questionable and Jonathan Hanks is doubtful. Yannick Ngakwe, Corey Lynch, Littleton, Denzel Perryman, KJ Wright, Nate Hodge, Jonathan Abram, Trayvon Murray, Casey Hayward. Incognito, Carrier, uh, Good, Seymour, McCoy, White, Nicholas Moreau, Trayvon Mullen, and Damon Arnett are all in the IR. Then for the Broncos, who are hosting this game, Oh yeah, this is 425 on CBS, if you didn't know. One of the four, uh, two 425 games. Teddy B starting for them. Uh, Melvin Gordon's questionable. Javante Williams probably will have to play. Qu Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Kendall uh, Hinton. Man, he's actually played this good as a, uh, tight, uh, as a wide receiver this year. He's actually gotten open a lot. It's pretty cool to watch. Noah Fant, Garrett Bowles, Dallin Risner. Don Reisner, Louis Cushenberry the third, Graham Glasnow, Bobby Massey, Shelby Harris, Mike Purcell, Damon Jones, Ramon Jones, Malik Reed, Alex Johnson, uh, Justin Strand, jo uh, Von Miller, Kyle Fuller, PJ Lockman, it's like a scream. Jackson is questionable. Justin Simmons, Pat Sertan, Bryce Callahan, Ronald Darby, all healthy. Jerry Judy, Adrian Killens, KJ Hamler, o Albert O, uh, Cody Conway, Brett Jones. Bradley Chubb, Jonathan Griffin, Jonas Griffin, Josie Jewell, Natarius Patrick, Mike Ford are all in the IR. They're, bad. They're pretty banged up, too, if I have to admit. So, for the keys of the game for this one, uh, 
For the Raiders offense, run the ball efficiently, no penalties, and protect Carr. So if they don't get penalties while protecting Carr, yeah, it's not going to be easy with the uh, injured offensive line, to say the least. But if they're able to just pull that off and run the ball well, like they can, it's going to be tough for the Broncos to come back. Raiders defense pressure uh, Bridgewater and force turnovers. The pressure in Bridgewater, I don't really think it's going to be a problem. Turnovers might be a little harder because Teddy Bridgewater is one of those quarterbacks who really doesn't turn over the ball a ton. So if they are able to force turnovers, it's going to be a long day for the Broncos offense. Broncos offense, where the corners on bootlegs and throw the deep ball. This offense needs to throw deep. It's annoying me how stagnant it can be. It needs to have some explosiveness to it. It's kind of simple. Broncos defense hold the offense under 20 points. I don't see that as that big of an issue. They have a really good defense. They're able to do that. I think their offense can't take care of business and put up points. The only problem is it's going to be really hard to do that with an offense that's going to be a li have a little bit of a chip on its shoulder. But either way, now we're going to a game uh, that is a little controversial. Um, it's from two years ago, if you remember. Everyone was talking about Cowboys-Patriots. This time it was on CBS at 425, week 6. It's not week 10. It's not week 12. Um, and, yeah. The Cowboys are 4-1. They're definitely really looking like the better team. The Patriots, though, they're 2-3. and three. They're hosting this game. If they can win this game, it, it's uh, the National Televised one. They win this game, it would be a big deal for me, for me as a football fan. And for any fan who doesn't like the Cowboys, pretty much. Dak starting for the Cowboys. Zeke is questionable. He probably will start, though. Mark Cooper, CD Lamb, Cedric Wilson, Dolan Schultz. Tyron Smith is questionable. Tyron Smith, he might have to go in, but he's not that bad. Connor Williams, Tyra Beatash, Zach Martin, uh, Tara Steele. Terrell Basham, Oza, Carlos Watkins, Randy Gregory will play. I can guarantee that because Chauncey Golson can't and Bradley and I cannot get pressure. LVE, uh, Keanu O'Neill, Michael Parsons, Anthony Brown, uh, Devon Donovan Wilson, uh, Devontae Casey, and uh, KZ, and Trayvon Diggs are all questionable. So, John Curse, Malik Hooker, uh, and Deshaun Wright might have to play. Jordan Lewis also behind them. They have. Leo Collins is suspended, but Josh Ball, Rico Dowell, Dowdle, Sean McKeon, Michael Cart, uh, Michael Gallup, uh, Sue, all in New York. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, Neville, uh, Neville Gallimore, Reggie uh, Robinson, Kevin Joseph, Francis uh, Bernard, all on the IR. Then for the Patriots. And then for the Patriots, they have Mac Jones starting. Damian Harris is questionable. Can't imagine he won't play, though. Jacoby Myers, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry, uh, Isaiah Wynn, Mike Onwenu, David Andrews, Ted Karras will play because Shaq uh, Mason is out. Justin Huron's going to probably have to play because Trent Brown is obviously on the IR. Dietrich Wise, uh, Lawrence Guy, Devon Godchuk, Chase Winovich, Matt Judon, Dante Hightower, Jamie Collins will probably have to play because Kyle Van Noy is questionable. J.C. Jackson, Kyle Duggar. <coughs> Devin McCourty, Jalen Mills, and J Jonathan Jones are questionable. They also have Jaquan Williams be uh, behind him. Um, other than Dolan Keen Tr and Tr Trent Brown and, and Fernie Jenkins, they have a lot of guys out, but they really have no one else on the IR. Just showing it's the Patriot way. Kind of simple. But either way, for the keys to the game for this thing, uh, pa it's NFL on CBS, if you didn't know. Patriots offense, run the ball, and score 30-plus points. That's a tall task for an offense that hasn't done that at all this year. Uh, but sorry to break it to you. It's time to wake up, so yeah, do that. Patriots offense, stop. Defense, stop the run. This defense, if they play physical enough, they can do it. But if they don't stop the run the games, they're not going to win the game. It's just, it, they're going to have to do it. But the Cowboys offense win the numbers game and take shots. What I mean by that is in the box, if they have the numbers advantage, you have to run the ball. Audible if you even have to. Run the football. This is that team's game this year. No more Dak throwing 80 times. Take shots, of course. It's how this offense is going to be really explosive, you ask me. So, yeah, Cowboys defense force turnovers. They've done that all year. It's not a great defense, but they do force turnovers, so I can't. I have to keep that in there for them to still be efficient and effective. So, yeah. That's going to be the end of this uh, for Cowboys-Patriots. I really don't want to talk about that game anymore. Next, we're going to a game I actually want to talk about is Seahawks-Steelers. Sunday Night Football. Hey, top six. Red Sox are up 9-3. That's good to know. But for the Seahawks, um, uh, it's
it's it, it's Seahawks Steelers 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 of course are two and three Seahawks are two and three huge game Steelers it, it it's 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 bad if they lose this game but Geno Smith starting for the uh for the Seahawks with Russell Wilson on the IR Alex Collins DK Metcalf Tyler Lockett Freddie Swain Will Disley as Gerald Everett is out another game Dwayne Brown Damian Lewis Kyle Fuller, Gabe Jackson, Brandon Shield, Rasheem Green, Puna Ford, Al Woods, Carlos Dunlap, Jordan Brooks, Bobby Wagner, Darnell Taylor. The Bears-Packers rivalry gets renewed this weekend. The Bears have been searching high and low for a franchise quarterback since Sid Luckman. The Packers have had two of the all-time greats back-to-back in Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers as a result. And Rodgers made this point earlier in the week. When Favre became the Packers quarterback, the Bears were leading the all-time series by a fairly comfortable margin. Now that is the other way, thanks to the presence of those two guys. They get together this weekend. And every time I see the Bears at 3-2, and two, I think it's a misprint. How are the Bears 3-2? and two? They're one game behind the Packers. They win this game. They're technically in first place. It feels like they're 0-5 or 1-4, and four, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're – listen – if you're listening to, to, and look, I'm not there, and I don't know what they're saying, but I have a good feel for it. If you listen to Chicago Talk Radio. Uh, Cameron Hayward, TJ Watt, Devin Bush, Joe Schobert, Alex Heisman, Joe Aiden, Terrell Edmonds, Mika Fitzpatrick, Cameron Sutton, Justin Lane, James Pierre, Demarcus A.C., Stephon Tua, Tyson Alua, Luke. Jo- uh, jo- uh, Joshua Dobbs and, and well, I'm sure that the most that there. most of the people who are calling pretty, are dissatisfied about how the Bears are playing. Are now, exactly. hard to be that way yeah. after you go to Vegas and they win. win but Mike, game. I want to take a quick 180 so result, and just tell you one thing that always will stick yeah, in my mind the ball, about the Bears-Packers rivalry. Okay. I was covering a Bears Packers CFL game in 1990 for Sports Illustrated. So if you didn't know Gino and Smith the rivalry was really at its peak, and the Bears were better. And I remember really two things. Really good thing. I was going to follow the Bears team the bus from Appleton, to Wisconsin to Green Bay. To it's about 28, 30 miles. It's a nice little half hour drive on a Sunday morning. I get in the car, I get behind the bus, and I pull out and I start following them. And I'm listening to the radio, and the radio comes on, and they say, this is the Rocket Apple in Green Bay on Bears Still Suck Weekend. And I follow them. I follow the bus, and about five miles outside of Appleton on the road to Green Bay, I see this strange sight on the side of the road. It's a four-lane highway. Buses are going maybe 50, 55 miles an hour. And I see this strange sight. There is a gigantic, must be an eight foot tall and very wide stuffed brown bear hanging by. Don't really want to talk about that horrific game. But the next game is Monday Night Football. And as you can see on the seat, Julio Jones is going to play. It's Monday Night Football and it's on ESPN two days from now. But for the Bills... They got Josh Allen starting, Zach Moss, Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, Cole Beasley, Dawson Knox, Reggie, um, Deion Dawkins, John Feliciano, Mitch Morris, Daryl Williams, Spencer Brown, Greg Rousseau, Ed Oliver, Starla Tule, Jerry Hughes, um, Merrill Addison, AJ Evanesa, Vernon Butler, Harrison Phillips, Matt Milano, Jermaine Edmonds, AJ Klein, Tredavious White, Jordan Foyer, Micah Hyde, Levi Wallace, Teron Johnson, Saron Neal. They only have Marquez Stevenson and Brian Cox in the IR. Yeah, the Bills are four and one of the best team in the NFL right now. Uh, the Titans are uh, three and two. They're trying to get back. They're trying to get a huge upset Monday Night Football. They uh, they're a little short-handed though, because but they do of course have Brian Tannehill, Derek Henry, AJ Brown, Julio, Chester Rogers, Anthony Ferkser, Geoff Swain, Taylor Luan, Roger Saffold, Ben Jones, Nate, uh, Davis, David Questenberry, uh, Dylan Ryanson on the um still on the bench. Jeffrey Simmons, Sierra Tar, Danigo Audrey, Harold Landry, David Long Jr., Rashad Evans is question most of, um so Nick Dozinba might have to play. Bud Dupree, of course, is back. Janoris Jenkins, Dan Krushank, Chris Byer, uh Kevin Byer, Christian Fulton is out, so Chris Jackson, Elijah Moulton, and Brian Borders will have to step up. But they have a lot of uh Rashad Weaver, uh Derek Robertson, Larry Merchinson. Brandon Kemp, Aaron Brewer, Daniel uh, Munier, Tommy Hudson, Der- uh, Darrington Evans, uh, and Racy McMath all on 
DIR. So yeah, the Tigers are a little bit banged up. They need a big win here, though. It could It's going to go a long way for them to wrap up the division, technically. Because <laughs> it's really hard for this team not to win the division when the other three teams in the division have a combined two wins. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And I'm just being saying the obvious there, but yeah, it's pretty bad. Obviously, it's pretty bad. But then for Monday Night Football, Bill's offense, run the ball and take shots down the field. Josh Allen can do it. Just do what he did the last week, basically. We play methodical, beat the uh, Titans at their own game, and it'll, it'll be a good game. Bill's doing the same thing as the last five weeks, just play the same football. You know what? They're not going to be able to stop the Titans' run game. It's not going to happen. I just have a feeling, and I know how this defense plays. But if they don't give up 500 rushing yards, I don't think it matters. Because they force turnovers, they play really good defense. Titans, the offense, run the ball and win the battle in the trenches. Running the ball and winning the battle in the trenches will go a long way for them to have a chance of winning this. Titans even just hold the offense under 25. You do that, the, the uh, Titans might actually have a chance of winning this thing. Either way, guys, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the recap, um, the preview. We got 13 games. Force four teams on the bye who are the 49ers. Of course, they're going to be the 49ers, Jets, Falcons, and Saints. So, if you're any of those teams, uh, well, yeah, you get the week off. Either way, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the recap. I'm going to the I'm going to the Giants Rams game tomorrow. So yeah, get ready for the Monday night uh the Monday night recap, the power rankings. But before that, we got uh the recap um the week six recap on Monday. So yeah, hope you like uh enjoy the fo football week. Like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed.